Well, I shouldn't be surprised that we now have some information on the chip going inside of the Nintendo Switch 2. Coming from at AuraXDA over on Twitter, he is a reputable leaker of mobile hardware, has a very long track record of getting these leaks correct. And one thing to note about this leak is it does have to do directly with the chipset going inside a switch, but there will be some speculation attached to it based on the NVIDIA leak from last year and what it could mean. But we're going to talk about why it's important to understand this leak in the full context and what it means, because it does show that Nintendo is seemingly going for something that is extremely modern and makes sense. Now, before we get into this, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. Woo! We're getting close, guys. All we got to do is get there, and I'll give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this. So according to Connor, aka at O-R-E-X-D-A, uh, this person says another NVIDIA Tegra for Nintendo Switch will be manufactured from 5LPP. I will keep uploading this info on Twitter as soon as I can. What's important to note about the 5LPP manufacturing node is that it's a 5 nanometer processing node. One advantage of the 5 nanometer processing process is that it allows chip makers to design and produce chips with a higher density of transistors in a given area, reducing the overall hardware footprint. Also, because everything is closer together, it leads to less power consumption and usually more output. So, so let's say you output 40 watts of power, you're going to get significantly more performance than you would on, say, the Switch's 10 nanometer process, 12 nanometer process, etc. So this is really, really exciting for the future. And we can kind of look at this and combine it with some information that we had leaked from NVIDIA last year. Credit going out to Zomble over at the Reset Era forums for kind of putting this together to give us an idea of what this might have to mean. So the 5L PP Samsung node rumor from five hours ago found on the last page offers a 50% power consumption reduction over the eight nanometer found in Orem, which is what people think this chip is based off of. The T239 is the rumored chip inside the new switch, and they think it's based off of Orem, but this chip is using an even better processing node than Orem. Now, these clocks were found in the NVIDIA Hacks MVN API, a DLSS test using an Ampere GPU. It had three clock speeds at 660 megahertz at 4.3 watts, 1.125 gigahertz at 9.2 watts, and then 1.38 gigahertz at 12 watts. Uh, he believes that these are three separate tests for separate modes, handheld, dock, and then a stress test. Handheld mode would offer about two teraflops of performance, which is better than the Steam Deck, plus you have DLSS. Uh, Dot mode would offer 3.456 teraflops of performance, which is on the same tier as the Xbox Series S. But then you got to add DLSS on top. And he says, I tracked Orin's estimated power consumption via NVIDIA's power estimation tools. 624 megahertz with Drake's configuration requires 8.5 watts on 8 nanometer. And, and the name of this DLSS test clock was 4.3 watts. This lines up extremely well with the rumor that Drake is on a 5 nanometer process. These numbers are estimations and the GPU is different, but it falls in the realistic range, as does 1.125 gigahertz from what I've been able to extrapolate from the tool. Orin's CPU power consumption for eight cores at 1.881 megahertz is 4.5 watts, considering only seven cores would be used for games with one reserved for the operating system. This would give you about 3.94 watts on those seven cores and a reduction of power consumption to half. Basically, what you want to know from all of this is that the stuff we talked about in a prior video about the possible specs of this matching an Xbox Series S are very, very plausible because of the 5 nanometer process lowering that power consumption. At the power consumption of Orin, you are probably going to get not that great of battery life, but since this is 5 nanometer and gives us about half of the same power consumption for equal performance, I do think that we are looking at something that is going to impress people. And I know there are some that put out there, well, it being as powerful as an Xbox Series S isn't impressive. But let me tell you something. You're not getting a PlayStation 5 in your pocket. There's no mobile phone device that fits in your pocket that outputs that kind of power. The devices that are more powerful than a PlayStation 5 in the mobile handheld PC space are stupidly expensive, really big and bulky, because 
let's just put it this way. The amount of heat to run a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, it's just not possible at the moment to put that in the handheld space. Technology isn't there. Now in five years, will technology be there? Yeah, probably. But Nintendo's likely looking to launch something in the next 18 months, not five years from now. Also, yes, this process could be improved on for a potential Switch 2 Pro or something like that, but we're not here to talk about that today because we just got to get to the Switch 2 in general. So, look, you could say it's a pipe dream, but now we have some rumors and reports and evidence out there suggesting that, hey, this is actually going to be a fairly powerful device. And if you imagine Nintendo having the power of Xbox Series S, just think what they could do with the next Zelda game, the next Mario game, the next Xenoblade, what Nintendo could do with the power of an Xbox Series S in your damn hands. Something that's as powerful as the Steam Deck without counting DLSS in there. Something as powerful as the Xbox Series S without using DLSS. And DLSS gives you more performance, headroom, and many different situations to increase frame rates and obviously increase resolution. So I'm really excited by this. What's interesting too is some people did some deeper research into the Switch OLED and actually looked at the board and the chipsets on the board and it does look like the Switch OLED motherboard is significantly different than the motherboard in the other Switches. So for people that want some evidence on, on Switch Pro existing and, and maybe what happened, uh, the motherboard has chipsets on it on the Switch OLED that support a 4K output through that USB-C port, which is not present on the prior motherboards. So that is one update that we see in Switch OLED. We obviously now have a full breakdown of all the chipsets inside the dock that also support a 4K output. So it kind of looks like the Switch OLED was going to be that Switch Pro, but for whatever reason, likely the fact they just COVID, right? Like manufacturing problems, couldn't get enough of the chip they wanted to use, that the Pro ultimately got scrapped and we got the Switch OLED instead. And now we have chipsets on the motherboard and inside the dock, kind of showing that Nintendo was trying to do something that they didn't need to do with the Tegra X1. And that's because they were going to release something that had higher clocks and was going to support 4K in some way, even if it was just 4K Hulu. I have no idea. Or maybe they had some native uh, FSR upscaling or something they were going to do. All I know is uh, this next Switch looks like it's going to be quite powerful. I'm really, really excited. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on the fact that this is a 5 nanometer process, it looks like, for Nintendo's next thing. Now, again, this is just a rumor at this point, even though it comes from somebody highly credible who has a big history in getting this stuff right. It's still very interesting to think about. And it's going to be made by Samsung, which, hey, Nintendo already works with Samsung on the OLED screens. Now, this 5 nanometer process would still be like NVIDIA and ARM technology, but they're just the, the overall manufacturers. As Nintendo sort of shifts away from some of the manufacturers that they've used over the years. Maybe for ethical reasons. Who knows? Anyways, guys, I'm Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.